I call upon uh, Rohul Habib uh, Mola, uh, head of supply chain PT Sanofi, to talk to us about uh, designing supply chain around the digital consumer. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. So long day, lot of slides, another man in front of you, maybe with a lot of other slides, right? So not really. Uh, very few slides. We will talk. Um, I will try to draw your attention. The thing which is between me and your attention, what's that? Can anyone tell? What's the thing between your attention and me? Our cell phones. We are looking at our cell phones. Right, so I would like to draw your attention for 30 minutes uh, without any cell phone. Okay, maybe I will ask you a question, so be prepared for that as well. Right, it's scary, so don't use a cell phone. Right, so um, I'm Rahul Habib Mola, I'm from uh, Sanofi. Uh, Indonesia, PT Adventist Pharma. Uh, my slide doesn't represents my company's view, it's my personal opinion. So uh, before uh, getting on, getting to the designing of supply chain on uh, around our digital consumers, let's look at the global global landscape of digital spending. Right, so in 2018, the total market was 2,500 trillion US dollar globally. It's so big. Only digital spending. And uh, you can see the digital buyer penetration worldwide in terms of internet population. Last year, it's almost 50%. So 50% of the internet users are spending the money digitally, I mean they're purchasing online. 50% is yet to start buying through online. And these are the top 10 countries, uh, their e-commerce sales in terms of total retail sales. There is no Indonesia. What's the percentage for Indonesia? How much e-commerce sales is happening as a percentage of total retail spending or consumer spending. Any idea? Less than? Less than 1%. I don't know, actually I have to look for that data over the internet. I haven't found, but I have calculated somehow. It is uh, around 10% of total uh, Total uh, consumer spending is happening online, e-commerce, in Indonesia. So I, I will show you how I have calculated it. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know, but it's roughly 10%. Yeah. So, and again, the, the, the middle bottom thing, it is showing, uh, uh, some of the speakers have said, even if people are uh, physically going to the brick and mortar sh shops, they are doing their research online before. And if you look at it, the research is more on cell phone. 33% e-commerce traffic is an on cell phone, right? It's not working. And when they when they are buying, when people are buying, people are doing research on cell phone. But when they are buying, they are going to their desktop or laptop. 75%. Is it correct? Are we doing the same? So we are doing research on mobile. Then when we are going for the purchase, we are going to our laptop or desktop. The data is showing that I don't know whether it is right or wrong. 
for all of us. It's, it's true for me. I do research online uh, in my mobile, but when, when I do the purchase, I go to laptop. So the, it shows 76% of uh, retail sales, I mean online retail sales are happening from laptop or desktop. So some demography over there, uh, how many percentage of people are buying once in a week? Uh, in, it's almost 50%, 30% male, 18% female, right? Age-wise, there are some demography. It's very interesting, people who are designing their business around digital space, they should look at the demography to, um, to fix their target strategy for the target market, target age group. So the global is quite big for us, right? Let's come back to Indonesia. So this is Indonesia consumer spending. It's not, it's not e-commerce or it's not digital spending. It's the total spending, right? So uh, in, in 2010, it was roughly 8 thousand billion idea and it became almost 150 thousand billion idea uh, this year it's coming uh, almost doubled in 10 years time uh, any idea how much is this percentage of consumer spending uh, represents the GDP of Indonesia Percentage of consumer spending of total GDP. Anyone? Anyone? Ten percent only. Only ten percent. So uh, GDP is roughly one trillion, one trillion dollar, right? And this is roughly hundred, hundred billion dollar. So hundred billion dollar. Uh, I mean, 10% of the GDP is going for consumer spending. And out of that $100 billion, 10 or $12 billion is accounting for digital, digital spending. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Rise of Indonesia digitally. Right? What are the uh, positives? What are the disadvantages or opportunities? There are five unicorn of Indonesia. What are those? Gojek, then? Tokopedia, right? Yes, Bukalapak. Right, these are the four. These are the four uh, unicorn startup or digital. Right, and then uh, next you can see 12 billion US dollar uh, spending happened in 2018 uh, digitally. So that is roughly 10% of 100 billion dollar. That's how I calculated. So the digital spending is roughly 10%. <laughs> it is forecasted. 53 billion dollar. It will be five times in next six years time. So uh, I see my uh, other speakers from different industries. They're planning their strategy for. So uh, I haven't prepared. I haven't uh, calculated the numbers. So uh, there are source and all the sources. Disclosed here, you can go through it, uh, you can see. And the rising of uh, middle class, affluent middle class, uh, the number of middle class is uh, sharply increasing in Indonesia. So that is also being a big catalyst for uh, 
consumer spending as well as digital spending, e-commerce spending, and urbanization, massive urbanization going on. People are moving from rural to urban. Urban, urban places are becoming more, uh, rural places are becoming more and more urbanized. So that is also help, helping to uh, make the market five times in next six years time. What are the challenges or opportunities in Indonesia for doing business around digital? One is the biggest challenge is supply network, in, uh, I mean the logistics is so big, so big. So it's, it's one of the biggest challenge uh, to reach your product, maybe from if your hub is in Java, to reach in Papua, to reach in Aceh, it's, it's very challenging. Uh, diversity is also a challenge. People are very different. People's choice are very different. Uh, so, um, especially for consumer companies, it, it's, a, it's a challenge uh, uh, when they plan when they uh, plan for their product or services. Infrastructure is uh, uh, is something related with the uh, uh, supply network as as well. So, and the business culture. What is that? What is that? Uh, what is the challenge with regard to business culture? I read many articles while I am doing this research and preparing my uh, slides. I saw in many places that in small startups, small e-commerce sites, they don't respond to emails. And it's, it's kind of feedback. On the, uh, on the on the many places that small e-commerce sites or small startups they don't respond emails they prefer to be contacted over WhatsApp more than on email so um, yeah 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 but but more specific for Indonesia this is not common in uh, maybe other part of the world, or maybe some, some, somewhere it, it can be the case, but this is very specific to Indonesia. People tend to uh, connect more uh, personally, right? So these are not uh, challenge. I will say these are, this can be turned into opportunity for business also. So all the challenges can be turned into uh, opportunities. So I would like to use your mobile now. Just search for this Jakarta Post, Amazon, Whole Foods, Latest News. Can you use your mobile? Google. Google Jakarta Post, Amazon, Whole Foods, and Latest News. This news should appear. Have you found it? So this is an article uh, just published in Jakarta Post last Saturday. Uh, I was just going through it. It's very uh, related with this topic. I, I would request you to go through it for maybe two, three minutes. We, we will discuss on it.
Can I help anyone to find it or help you help? Reflect on what had happened. What has, what is the strategy of Amazon here? Any brave man or woman who wants to share his opinion? I think it's the uh, Walmart Amazon fight once again, and uh, they're trying to merge the Prime and the regular. Um, uh, ordering services together, extending the customer base, reducing the price, and bring the, to our delivery bigger volumes. Um, so uh, I don't know. Maybe Walmart is quite strong in physical store. They are not. They are not uh, really strong in digital. Uh, E-commerce. They are not. They are quite weaker than Amazon. So Amazon acquired this company two, three, four years back, I forgot to date. So Amazon is trying to bring the synergy of this physical setup along with their uh, strength in e-commerce side and trying to beat uh, Walmart. So, so the, the, the most interesting thing that they have done, this is very location specific. Wherever they have that physical whole, whole food um, store, they have tried to offer near proximity customers something very exclusive, which is if they order, they will get the goods in two hours time. And they have used, uh, Amazon is using two, three specific things. One is their prime users, history, historical purchase. They're proposing those to those prime users that you can buy it and you can get the delivery in two hours time. Right? This is one. The other thing is uh, they're not really offering this exclusive thing um, for all of their products. They're just offering those products which are readily available in Whole Food. Amazon has many vendors, millions of vendors. Amazon has um, uh, so many products. They're offering only those products with this exclusive service of two hours delivery, then order only for the products which are available in those Whole Foods on those specific whole foods. They have done the um, a pilot in two, three locations, then they have expanded it to 30 different states of the US. So uh, there is a part of the news where it's saying, once they started this uh, offer, it has increased the download of the new app almost 400,000 download had happened in, in the month of August only for this strategy and this strategy seems very effective for Amazon and although um, if we look at the market space uh, retail market space Amazon is very weak compared to Walmart Walmart share is almost 25% Right? That's what it mentioned in the article. So they are trying to grab the, um, the retail market share uh, through this strategy. So this is, uh, uh, this is one supply chain strategy uh, which uh, Amazon has taken and I think um, this will be successful. A very interesting way of bringing synergy between physical store and uh, um, strength on uh, e-commerce.
Anyone want to share something? But I think if you look at it strategically, uh, the only difference between Walmart and Amazon has been, uh, Amazon has been good with electronics, um, um, apparel, and, and a lot of other tidbits. Food and FMCG has been a weak link at Amazon, where Walmart has been traditionally very strong. So this fresh food concept is, is their attempt to bite into that segment. So what we're talking about segmented chains early in the morning, so it's, it's just designed a product to get into one uh, pocket right, of, of the consumer buying. All the perishable products. Yeah. Perishable products. Perishable, non-perishable, anything which is which is uh, traditionally has been uh, Walmart, uh, or you can say it's the staples market. It could be fresh food, it could be a shampoo, it could be a um, uh, toothpaste. Uh, the segments which are traditionally not very, very high volume on Amazon, it's their attempt to get into that segment. So where the products are not really uh, differentiated, all the all the different um, platforms are offering the same product. Uh, let's say Aqua. Let's say Aqua. You can find Aqua uh, in many platforms in Jakarta. Which one you will go for? After price. So I think after price uh, is a convenience. Speed uh, of delivery. No convenience. Can I get it at home? Number one. Uh, number two, speed of delivery. How fast can I get it at home? I mean, if I get it in four days, I wouldn't want to buy it. Right, right. So, I mean, price is the first point which is making the difference in between different platforms. And then, convenience, I am assuming everyone will deliver it, deliver at your foods doorstep. Right? So, convenience is given. It, uh, it cannot be like that you have to go and pay. Convenience is given, it has to be delivered at your doorstep. So after price, the, the most important factor in my opinion is speed of delivery. This will becoming the more and more challenging um, part of supply chain for all the e-commerce sites in coming days. Our speakers uh, from um, um, from previous sec previous uh, last to last Kupalopa, right? Am I Kupalopa? They can say it better. They can say it better than me. Whether this is the biggest challenge because consumers from consumers' perspective, the differentiating point will be the delivery time. You cannot really make a big difference with the price of Equal. It will be marginally plus and minus 1%, 2%, 5%. How much is the margin of Aqua? It should be very less. So, I mean, convenience, uh, you're right, you mentioned rightly, convenience is given, it's given. Uh, if you order to Tokopedia, if you order to um, any other, there's Happy Fresh, uh, many things. Everyone is delivered at your uh, doorstep. So, the uh, one thing is whether you are really sticking to your commitment. You are pushing a estimated time of delivery. Whether you are meeting it repeatedly, that will uh, ensure customer experience. Whether you are um, meeting the customer's expectation, whether you are we are you are delivering your promise promise time. So. That is one. Then the, the, the other thing is um, speed. How quicker you are um, changing your order into delivery. So that will be the biggest challenge. So uh, here the positive, positive part of Indonesia, which is what there is a there is a big advantage in Jakarta at least, or bigger cities in. Indonesia, which is not there in the developed markets, as long as the speed of delivery is concerned. The e-commerce sites are using Gojek for delivery. It's, it's not available in developed markets. This kind of uh, logistics sub service provider uh, is not available in US for sure. Right? So it's an it's an advantage. So you have a, at least in Jakarta, if we think 
I have several experience with Tokopedia. I ordered some products. Uh, so I received the delivery in three, four hours time. So it's quite fast, quite fast. And uh, it is very challenging uh, if I think about US where Amazon is um, committing to deliver in two hours. So how much infrastructure they have to build to ensure this two hour commitment. Maybe uh, they can build it on their own or they can go for a established 3PL, right? But whoever he, whoever the organization who is making this happen, they have to have a strong, a strong uh, network. So here in at least uh, Indonesia, Gojek is there. You can just bang on Gojek to ensure your delivery. So Tokopedia is using Gojek. So it's, it makes their life much easier, much simpler compared to the developed market. So in developing markets, this uh, ride hailing motorbikes at least, um, I can tell Indonesia, Vietnam, Vietnam also, um, this uh, ride hailing motorbike is uh, very popular. So there this uh, logistics service provider is readily available. Um, India also it, it, it's there. Um, Philippines I'm not sure whether it's there or not. But so this is a, this is a plus plus for the e-commerce sites for Indonesia at least. Uh, any other comment on this article? Any other observation which I may missed? Yeah, you can say it's a war between physical stores and um, e-commerce side. Uh, in my opinion, in my personal opinion, eventually uh, Amazon will win because the, I know from some other articles the number of store, physical stores of Walmart is sharply declining. They are shutting off their physical setups across uh, US. So eventually Amazon will be. In my opinion, I don't know. Anybody in the room from last mile delivery? No one? In my opinion, uh, the brick and mortar will win. Your opinion, brick and mortar will win. Yeah, if you look at the last mile delivery curves, they do a negative bell. The volume start increasing, your cost of delivery comes down, and then there's a tipping point. Beyond that, the, the moment the volume increases, your cost of delivery starts going up. Either you have to drastically revamp your infrastructure and invest a lot of capital uh, in an unpredictable market, or you start reading. So if you look at Amazon also, Amazon on its uh, uh, online business loses about $9 billion every year. But then Amazon makes about 11 million on the AWS business. Cloud business. Cloud business. Right? Yeah. So Amazon, Amazon um, we all love to share Amazon stories. Amazon is not as rosy as uh, it seems to be. Amazon has changed uh, the delivery paradigm in the uh, US. Entering into new markets like this one, uh, with two hour deliveries and free deliveries. But uh, everything else is starting getting paid for. 
So the, the slabs are changing so gradually that you don't realize that anything under ten dollars now will be charged. Anything under twenty dollars will now be charged. So the, the, the delivery cost is being padded up again. So the difference between the online price and the offline price, which was a big motivator for everybody to shop online, beyond the uh, convenience factor, is diminishing. So the click and collect, the convenience of online shop list, pick it up from the store, uh, is something which will replace, and it will replace very fast. Uh, you'll see the trend in the next three to five years. So um, one point, one interesting point you are bringing, which is the um, profitability of this e-commerce business. So the mar margin, I mean, uh, I know the a bit of this history of Amazon. So the, it started in 1994, and it, it crossed it break even in 2013 or 14. So that is true for more or less all the um, all the e-commerce sites. I think I don't know about. The, uh, the unicorns of Indonesia, how much money they are really making, but uh, margin should be margin should be a challenge. It will be a challenge. Okay, so we are running short on time, that is the reason I am trying to prompt you to do yeah, 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 okay, okay. So I don't have much of slide. Terima kasih banyak. And all the all the materials is being collected from these uh, links. You can go to go to it. Nothing on my own. Thank you very much. So much. Thank you so much. Sir.